Good morning, church. Um, welcome to this fourth Sunday Lent um, in Lent. Uh, my name is Katie, and I'm your liturgist today. So I'd like to ask everyone to please keep yourself muted. Um, only unmute yourself when you do the response, but make sure your room is quiet. So today we welcome our beloved guest preacher, Reverend John Oda. Uh, we thank him for his support, for our worship, by his wonderful message. And please keep his ministry with Asian American Language Ministry plan um, in your prayers um, to uh, walk with brothers and sisters on this 40 days Lenten journey. You are invited to come and join the Lenten devotional time on Zoom every Saturday morning. Um, so to the 27th at 11 a.m. on Zoom. Um, we will hold Good Friday service to remember Jesus' um, suffering and death on the cross. So please save that day. It will be on April 2nd at 2 p.m. If you or your family and friends need personal safety alarms, please contact Pastor Maynell. <clears throat> okay. Um, friends, for God so loved CCUMC that God gave his only child, Jesus Christ, so that any human being of any background who believes in the mission, work, and atonement in Christ will not suffer punishment, but instead have the gift of eternal joy and life. Now, I invite you to take a deep breath. And please join me in the call to worship. How are we to know we are loved by God as deeply as Sarah and Abraham were? At, at the, the center, center of the covenant, covenant is God's promise, God's promise as well as God's, as God's honor. honor. How are we to know that when we cry out to God that we will be heard? At the, at center, the center of our relationship, relationship with God is, God is love, love and trust. And trust. How are we to trust that what people like Paul and Jesus tell us is true? At the, At the center, center of scripture, scripture we, find we find God, God full of grace, and, grace and, wonder. and wonder. We praise, we praise God, God for God's God steadfast love for us in Jesus Christ. Christ. I now invite you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I now invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, Jesus' Name Above All Names. Please meet yourself.
<clears throat> Lord, God, in your holy word today, we heard that you asked us to come to you and that more you seek us like hen seeks out her chicks, that you offer us the protection and the safety of your strong wings. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly, you're, you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness, you nurse us. And with pure milk, you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the death. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. In your name we pray, amen. Princess, please unmute yourself. Our reading of scripture this morning comes from Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Let us read and listen with our whole selves to what the Holy Scripture or Holy Spirit has to say to us today. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way. Because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather to your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So friend, this morning we welcome Reverend John Oda. Let's do this to welcome him. <laughs> <laughs> now we welcome uh, his message now. All right. Well, thank you for having me uh, once again. You know, I love Zoom because I'm seeing people that I have not seen before at CCUMC. Um, and your names are on the bottom, <laughs> so I, can, I know who you are. Um, so I'm going to share my screen because as those of you who have seen my, <clears throat> my sermons before, um, I always do a, a PowerPoint. So tell me if you're seeing Are you seeing the presenter image again? You are. We, we okay. see what you see. Uh, we see the scriptures. Right. Do you see, does someone, can someone tell me if they see the presenter image? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let's try this. So 
sorry. Okay. Does that work? Yes. We don't see you, but we see the slides. Do you see the presenter image? Or do you see we, the we have yeah. two two screens okay. on the on this? Yeah, we have two. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay, but, sorry. All <laughs> right. Thank you for being patient with me here. Um, yeah, it's really good to be here once again at Chinese Community United Methodist Church. It, it is such a weird time. Um, and I know that you've been getting some, some of my videos, my amateur little videos of my sermon. So this is much better that I can see your faces and, and uh, kind of see you falling asleep or, you know, taking your computer to the kitchen or whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so for those of you who don't know me, I think there might be a couple of you who don't know who I am. Uh, I direct something called the Asian American Language Ministry Plan at the General Border Global Ministries, which is uh, located in Atlanta. Uh, so my headquarters are in Atlanta. So AALM is one of the six ethnic plans of the United Methodist Church. There are a lot of people don't know there are six ethnic plans that work with the churches across the country to help strengthen them and grow them and plant them. So there's AALM, there's the Korean ministry plan, there's the Native American ministry plan, there's the strengthening the black church plan, uh, Pacific Islander plan, and the Hispanic Latino plan. And so ALM works with the 12 different uh, Asian caucuses. So as we know, Asia itself is just a geographic area and there are actually 48 different countries, but right now ALM is only working with 12 different Asian caucuses. Uh, it's funded by the General Conference every four years, no, every six years. Um, and that the funding started in the 70s. So, um, so what have we been up to? We recently dispersed about $100,000, actually over $100,000 to 28 different Asian American churches across the country that were affected by COVID-19. So um, there are so many churches where the giving has gone down um, where people were having a really difficult time getting online. And so we gave funds to, you know, for people to, to purchase um, tablets and video cameras and everything to help them get online. Uh, and then lastly, I'm an ordained elder in the Cal Nevada Conference right here. And I live in Pinole, right up the road from Oakland. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We'll start with an opening prayer. And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about Lent, even though we're well into Lent, just some facts. And then I'm going to talk about this church in uh, Israel, outside of Jerusalem, actually in Jerusalem, called Dominus Flavet, uh, the Lord Web Church. And then why a mother hen for lessons from this Bible passage. We'll close with a video and a prayer. All right? Great. Right. Okay, here we go. So please, please uh, pray with me. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Amen. Amen. All right. So here's a question. Where is Lent found in the Bible? Anyone know? All right. Well, I'll give you the answer. <laughs> it's actually a, tr a trick question. <laughs> it's a trick yeah. question, Mina, because uh, Lent is not found in the Bible, uh, but it's biblically inspired. <laughs> um, 40 days of Lent equals the 40 days of um, the days that Jesus was in the wilderness. But also, um, hold on a second, sorry. 40 days and 40 nights of rain in Genesis, uh, 40 years that the Hebrews wandered in the wilderness and Moses fasted for 40 days. So those are also uh, ways that Lent is, uh, is inspired by the 40 days. 
So also during Lent, many people fast. And um, usually people, Christians, uh, commit to not real fasting. You know, we're not fasting from food, but some of us fast from certain luxuries and indulgences in order to replicate the sacrifices that Jesus made while being in the desert for 48 days. So many people fast from chocolate. Um, I'm fasting from milk chocolate, but I'm still eating dark chocolate. So that's, uh, that's like a half fast. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about this Dominus Flavet, the Lord wept church. And I'll tell you why I'm talking about this church. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, you know Jerusalem is kind of, it's, it's up on a hill, but on the hill, it's on this flat part. And then right next to Jerusalem, there's the Mount of Olives, which is a very slight hill that kind of goes like this. And the Lord Webb Church is kind of halfway up the hill overlooking Jerusalem, all right? So this is where, as Jesus was walking into toward Jerusalem, he wept. Uh, it's the shortest Bible verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. It's also famous for uh, the, a mosaic that I'm going to show you. So this is the view from the church to Jerusalem. So if you look out the, the west-facing window, you see Jerusalem. And that gold dome there is the, uh, is the mosque in, in Jerusalem. All right. In f so this is the window you see there on your upper left. And then in front of it, covered by that red uh, cloth, is the altar. On the altar is a mosaic. And this is what the mosaic is. Mm. It says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I get, desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. So Jesus is describing himself as a hen. So my question always was, why does Jesus describe himself as as a mother hen, why does Jesus say, I'm like a mother hen? And why doesn't he say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I am the fierce eagle? Because the eagle is mentioned in the Bible 32 times. Uh, for example, in Exodus 19.4, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. The eagle is fierce and mighty, right? So why does Jesus not use that image? Why doesn't, why doesn't he use the image of the powerful leopard? Because the leopard is, is mentioned in the Bible eight times. In Jeremiah 5, 6, it says, a leopard is watching their cities. Everyone who goes out to them will be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many. I don't know why Jesus would say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I am a powerful leopard. Um, why didn't he uh, use the image of a, of a bold lion? The lion is mentioned in the Bible 100 times. Uh, in Proverbs 28, 1, it says, the wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are bold as lions. Um, I don't know why Jesus, why I didn't know why Jesus didn't use all these images. So why a mother hen? Why on earth does he use a mother hen. And I think the reasons why Jesus portrays himself as a mother hen provide us with the four lessons from this Bible passage. So let's go into the four lessons. 
This is, uh, here are the four lessons from the Bible passage. So here's the first lesson. Perhaps, just perhaps Jesus uses this image of a mother hen, and this is the first time he uses a female image because this image of a mother hen allows us to ponder female images of the divine, all right? So often in the Bible, we think of the divine as male, but here Jesus is describing him in the feminine as a mother hen. So this gives us a chance to, to think about uh, Jesus as a mother. Uh, secondly, I believe that Jesus used this image of a mother hen because Jesus knows that a mother will fight to protect her children. There's a, a motherly maternal instinct to protect your children. There's also a paternal instinct. I remember my daughter is 21 now, but I remember when she was three years old and we went to this playground in San Francisco where we, we used to live. And um, it was a pretty big playground. And so I just sat down and she went off and was playing in the, you know, in the playground. And maybe, maybe five minutes later, um, after I had sat down, I heard her uh, yell. And, you know, uh, a parent can hear their kids crying or screaming above everything else. And so I heard this, dad really loud uh, noise and I went over there and there apparently was, I don't know what happened, but there was a, a, some sort of little tussle uh, with an older child who was like five at the time, you know? And it was pretty amazing to me that my instincts as a parent to protect my daughter from harm just came out, you know, um, fiercely, fiercely. So I think that Jesus knew this. Jesus understood this and used this image uh, of a mother hen. Uh, thirdly, uh, Jesus uses the image of a mother hen because he wants to gather you and keep you safe under his wings, all right? So this image really gives us a, a wonderful uh, kind of sense of safety. You know, if you've ever seen a mother hen and the chicks walking around. Um, a friend of mine in Stockton has, I don't know, like 20 different chickens. And so every once in a while I go over to his house and you'll see the mother hen with the chicks and they just follow her around. You know, they stay really close to her because they know that she's the protection. I desire to gather you together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Jesus wants to keep you, keep you under his wings, keep you safe and warm and protected. Um, you know, today, as we were kind of just hanging out, chatting, I know there's a lot of you, some of you who have been sick, some of you have been in accidents, injured. And so this, I think this image is especially for you. Lastly, we might be expecting an eagle or a leopard or a lion. But God oh, yeah. comes to us in unexpected ways, um, at unexpected times, really. So I think maybe Jesus knew this would be kind of a new image, you know, an unexpected we image. We might be expecting an eagle or leopard. I am, I'm muting someone there. So God shows up to us in our lives in unexpected ways and in unexpected times. Um, the other week I was, um, I usually take um, our dogs for a walk in Pinole. This is a, this is an image of the bay in Point Pinole. And that day there had been yet another a uh, report of uh, another Asian person um, having violence perpetrated against him. And I was just very, very disturbed. And I was trying to, you know, calm sort of my mind, trying to figure out what my response would be. And 
getting more and more sort of upset at this because it seems like every you know 10 or 12 years the violence is pointed at the asians asian communities so walking on the beach really churned up really upset really disturbed and i look up and i see this image i see the sun going down over um, over the hills and it just blew my mind um, to me it, it is God showing up in unexpected ways you know God showing up in this beautiful sunset kind of to shake me out of my mind saying all right it's going to be okay John it's going to be all right I'm going to close with this um, video and let me explain this video to you a little bit this video is in thai so unless you speak thai you're not going to understand it there are subtitles here and um, my apologies if i've used this video before for you but this video to me is so perfect for god showing up in unexpected ways because you know god comes to us often through people, through kind acts, through, um, you know, a smile at the grocery store uh, that just warms our heart. Um, these are our ways that God comes to us. So this is a video to show how God comes to us in unexpected ways. Let's, let's watch this video. All right, let me, tell me if you hear this. There, there. Yeah. ทำอะไรเนี่ยฮะถามว่าเอาไปทําอะไรเอาไว้ให้แม่ฮะแม่ป่วยอ่ะอืมอย่าทําอย่างงี้อีกนะมวยก็ร้องLet's pray. Gracious God, you, um, you come to us in expected and in unexpected ways. 
Lord. Um, this morning, I want to ask for special prayers for all those who are feeling under the weather or nursing some injuries uh, from accidents. Um, I also want to say a special prayers for those of us in the congregation who are um, feeling challenged by life, whether it be because of work or school or um, relationships, finances, health. Lord, be with uh, those folks especially. Touch them and guide them and walk into their lives in unexpected ways, whether uh, perhaps it will be through a sunset that you provide for them or a smile or a, a phone call from a friend, Lord. During these difficult times, we need you. During these times of unknowing, uh, we need you. We need your strength. We need to know that there is um, a safe place to gather as a hen gathers her brood, Lord. We also uh, ask for special prayers for Pastor Emily on her recent loss. We be with be with her and her family as they continue um, to go through this grieving process. So, Lord, we thank you uh, for being with us uh, this Sunday morning and continue to show up in our lives in unexpected ways. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor John, for this wonderful message, really touching. And yeah, I saw this video before, but still when I watch it again, I still touched. So friends, I'd like to break us into um, five groups. So for, for 12 minutes, so uh, you have uh, two to three minutes each to share your thoughts and you can find the questions on your chat. The question is, number one, do you have a set image of God? And second, how has God unexpectedly showed up in your lives? So these two questions you can share in your room. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope you all had a good conversation in your breakout room. Um, now I would like to invite everyone to unmute yourselves to pass the peace of Christ with one another. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you to John, John Oliver for a beautiful uh, yes. message. Yes, yes, thank you, You're John. welcome. You're welcome. And then mm. I'd like to ask all of you to please mute yourself. Um, you are all invited to share your joys and concerns for yourself, your community, and God's world so that we might lift them up in common prayer. When you share, please unmute yourself. After each person has named their prayers, let us respond with the Lord hear our prayer. So I uh, share joy because I just heard Brani that her the wound on her on his head be healed, and so we give thanks to God. And I have two joys to other two joys to share too. Um, my son Leon got a, a accepted to be a, a call what he called it a research experiences uh, undergraduate so yeah uh, to to have some lab experience with this mathematics so that's one good thing for him and the other thing is Eugene is going to have the uh, I think the second round of interview from um, Apple so tomorrow so I'd like to ask you to pray for him too let us respond with Lord, Lord, hear, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. 
Thank you to all of you for this fellowship and also the prayers for Bernie and I after getting beat up by airbags. Prayers for the other young lady that uh, got broadsided. So uh, thank you. Let us respond with Lord. Prayer. 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 Yeah. Arnie? I just want to um, thank everybody for the prayers for Ed. Um, he had his second shot and didn't have any bad side effects, which we are real thankful for. Just has a little sore arm, but that's all. So thank you, everyone, for your prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. So we lift up our uh, five uh, graduates this uh, summer. Uh, Katie, Vincent, Iris, um, Lini, and also Alvina. Lord, hear our yeah, prayers. Our prayers. I'm thankful that in spite of the pandemic, people are still graduating, still getting their shots, still have pain in the arm, and uh, still have sleepless nights. <laughs> Lord, Lord, hear, hear, our Lord prayers. hear our prayers. So I would like to also raise another thing. Uh, gratitude that um, Reverend John Oda always um, ready for us, you know, whenever I ask, he would just say yes. So I really thank God for his, for his uh, help through uh, Pastor John. Lord, Lord hear our prayer, prayer. prayers. I'm just thankful to God for the vaccines that are working and it's getting to many, many people in our country. And we're slowly moving toward um, all getting our immunity. And I just thank you for all the scientists because, you know, a year ago, I don't, I didn't think that it would happen. But here we are, most of <coughs> us are vaccinated. And I'm just thankful that I got to see my grandkids yesterday. I got to hug them, got to carry uh, three month old baby Emmy and mm -hmm. celebrate it Ryla's sixth birthday. And we're getting close to being able to hug each other again. And Janice asked us to help babysit the baby in the coming weeks because she really needs help because she has an exam coming up at UCSF also a big presentation she's preparing and she has no time to prepare so she's desperate she wants Vince and me to go over and watch the baby and Ryla maybe twice a week and again starting in April every Friday because she's going to hire um, a nanny who's coming to the house with her baby but she wants me to help out on Fridays when the nanny can't come so we will be babysitting again <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, regularly. So I need prayers for our strength and our, um, I don't know, stamina, because we're not young anymore. And it's harder for me, especially climbing hills and steps. And with uh, my injuries, feels like injury in my legs. It's really hard in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I need the energy. So praise be to God for the opportunity, but we need help. Lord, Lord, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. All right. So let us, um, let us join our hearts to lift up our prayers for our community and the world. Um, let us pray. Holy One, our eyes that we will see with awe every person, every place we encounter each day that we may find safe places to rest and healing for our hearts. Surprise us by your presence when we least expect it. Open, uh, surprise us, O oh Lord, or oh God, by your presence in those who care and help 
who honor us with their stories, who walk beside us. Surprise us by your presence in those who mourn and in those who dance with joy. Delight us, O oh God, in your ecstatic and wriggly presence. The days we getting are getting louder or longer, sorry, Lord. The sun's rays are higher in the sky, bringing more light to our world. Warmth begins to flood over the colder portions of our nation. Let the warmth of your mercy and love pour over us. As we have gathered in this day to celebrate the good news that you have given to the world, remind us that it is our purpose to offer that good news to others not only in words, but in deeds of love and mercy, peace and justice. As we have offered names of people and situations which have been heavy on our hearts for your healing mercies, remind us also that we stand in need of that self same healing love. As we have prayed for ministries of peace and justice and for those engaged in those wondrous missions, Remind us that we are also on a journey of peace and justice whenever we offer comfort and aid to others. The COVID-19 pandemic has stripped away so much that we thought we needed, oh God. It has brought us back to the realization that family, community, connections between one another, the basics of touch and hugging and face-to-face -face communication, those are our roots and our strengths. Bring us back together across borders, languages, and economic divides. As more vaccines are approved and enter production and distribution, please, dear God, hasten the day when we can share birthdays and weddings, comfort the ill, grieve together with the dying, take comfort in common worship, and rejoice in common meals. As the pandemic eases, let us not forget our roots. Hold us fast above all to love. We pray all of these in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be, be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily, daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive we those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> We proclaim Jesus Christ with our mouths, in our actions, and through our lives. Let us offer up our lives to Christ, that in our lives we may be servants of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, you have created the universe. Everything we see has come into being because of you. Your glory is beyond our comprehension. Yet, you give us the most precious gift imaginable, your everlasting love and faithfulness. With great joy, we now offer our own gifts, puny in comparison, but given with grateful hearts that belong to you now and always. We are thankful for the opportunity to put these gifts to work, proclaiming your gospel of love. Amen. 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 God comes to us in many unexpected ways because God knows the situations and difficulties we are faced and God knows what we need. When we feel God's presence, strength, love, peace, and even challenges, it is when God is saying, you are mine, I love you. I now invite you to sing along to our closing hymn, You Are Mine.
Pastor John. Thank you. All right. Let me provide a closing benediction. And now go in peace and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Great week, everyone.